Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for calling Yashua out of the world of sin, out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. He is the strength of my life and I shall not be afraid. One thing I desire, I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh forever to behold his beauty, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and I will praise his name all the days of my life. And I will praise his name all the days of my life. And I will praise his name all the days of my life. Hallelujah. 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 Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we thank you, we love you, we praise you. We thank you for all your mighty acts toward the children of men. Thank you for calling us as a people out of the land of Egypt, our four parents, and you're calling us even today out of the world of sin. We thank you, Father, for your love, for your mercy, for your mercy does endure forever. We praise you. We thank you. We love you for all that you're doing, for all that has happened, and all the things that are going on in the world today bringing us closer and closer to Yahshua's appearance. And Father, hallelujah, as you wake up the dry bones, we pray that many, hallelujah, will hear quickly, 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 and make themselves ready, hallelujah, to enter into your kingdom. Hallelujah. At that marriage supper, hallelujah, Father, that you are getting ready to prepare for us. Father, we thank you. We love you. We repent of our sin. We acknowledge our sin and the sin of our foreparents. And Father, as we turn from every way that's not pleasing before your sight, we thank you for giving us your mercy, your extended grace upon our lives. Thank you for showing us your feast days, your commandments, your ordinances, and your statutes. We pray, Father, that as we walk up right before you, that you, by the power of your spirit, will do forth through and around each one of us whatever needs to be done. Father Yahweh, and we'll be so careful to give you the praise and the honor, for we give it to you in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, your son, our Savior, our Master, and our soon-coming King. Hallelujah. We praise you. We love you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father Yahweh. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, hallelujah. We bless your name. We thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. Father, hallelujah, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We shall not die but live to declare your works. We know it's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit that all these things are done. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your mercy does endure forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you in the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bring greetings from Congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the 15210 uh, area over in Belsuver. We thank you for allowing us to enter your home. I pray that you'll get your Bible, your pencils, and your paper, that you might write down some scriptures. Look, we are in a very mm -mm, progressive time right now where Father Yahweh's word is going forth all around the world. Father Yahweh is preparing those that he's calling unto salvation. And it's time for many people, hallelujah, to come to the knowledge of the truth, to see some of the things that Father Yahweh's word says that they may not even have even known. And yet, hallelujah, as I'm revisiting some of the subjects that we've done 
in the past, um, we started out with three of us, my late pastor, L Lewis Johnson, who was an apostle, uh, Shalak, and also Brother Willie Young, um, who's also passed on. And yet we thank Father Yahweh, hallelujah, for allowing his word to go forth all of these years. I pray that if you um, would, uh, if you have any questions, pray, pray. And ask Father Yahweh to lead God and direct you. Ask him to show you what you need to know. Ask him to guide you by the power of his spirit. And yet as we repent, Father Yahweh will give those who are in repentance his Ruach HaKadosh. I would like to share a few things even before I start this message, which is called the power of prayer and truth. Whenever we did um, and began the restoration message in 1991, we had magazines for every message that we did. And so um, we we're just thanking Father Yahweh for allowing us to continue. And I'm, as I said, revisiting these messages because this uh, the um, truth was aired in uh, around August of 1996 and in January of 1996, The Power of Prayer. When uh, we did The Power of Prayer, my late pastor, Lewis Johnson, had just come out of the hospital. He had a little bit of bronchitis, and so he didn't even minister that day, but he was there for moral support, and I just thank Father Yahweh for allowing us to have been able to do that program then, and yet I'm revisiting it because there are many things that people need to know, and as we are looking at the things that are happening in the world, we want to be ready for Father Yahweh's kingdom when Yahshua comes down from where Father Yahweh is to that elevated space and the people are able to go up with him, hallelujah, in that marriage supper, hallelujah. We praise Father Yahweh. I'd like to share just the titles of a couple of magazines that we have done. Uh, this one is called Family Curses. And we know that many things are happening in the world because sometimes he said, my people are destroyed before the lack of knowledge. So we want to see what Father Yahweh's word says. We want to do his blessed will. This magazine is on the law, broken down into many different parts. So people, if you read it, you will see some of the things that we as a people have been called to do. And then as we're keeping Father Yahweh's commandments, he's given us the commandments of Yahweh, but then we have been taught some traditions of men. So we want to be able to see the difference between them and make up our mind to walk in the law of Yahweh and keep his commandments by faith in Yahshua the Messiah. This magazine, um, The Father and Son, One Name, but Many Titles, Types, and Characteristics. And so when we're looking at uh, Yahweh our Father, we know that Yahshua came out from Father Yahweh in spirit form, and yet because of that, we know that Father Yahweh is and Yahshua are one by the Spirit. This magazine called, What Does the Bible Say About the Trinity? One or three. Oops. And I have the answer in the back because I do a full lesson about it because we need to know what the scriptures say. This magazine's called Satanic Activity and deliverance. We know that many things are going on in this world, and yet many people need to be delivered from those demon forces that are coming on them so that they can be at the place they need to be. And then once a person is delivered, then they can truly go into full repentance, confessing their sin, turning from them, turning by faith to Father Yahweh by faith in Yahshua the Messiah. Even Yahshua had faith to believe in Father Yahweh, that Father Yahweh would raise him from death. This magazine is called, if you know his name, please use it. Father Yahweh's name is Holy, it's Kodesh, so he wants us to call him by his name. He doesn't want us calling him by titles and types and things that he did not reveal, and yet all of us were taught some things, and so we all spoke some things, oh, Father, help us. We all spoke some things, hallelujah, back in the past that we should not have spoken. And so we want to, at this point, be at a place of, of walking in Father Yahweh's pathway so that we can become one. 
And so we become one as we study together, we pray together, we love one another, even as Father Yahweh told us to love one another, then we can be at that place Father Yahweh wants us to be. And this magazine is on the Holy Spirit, um, receiving the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and yet there's another magazine called To Be Led by the Spirit. We must be led by the Spirit of Yahweh, and yet we receive, hallelujah, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit indwelling as we are obedient to the commandments of Yahweh. So we want to bless Father Yahweh. We want to thank him for all the things that he's doing for us, through us, and around us. And I would like to share as well, we have the word of Yahweh Bible. It does have Yahweh and Yahshua's name in it. We have the, um, this is out of Michigan. And then we have uh, Yahweh's Tilhelium Psalms. This is just a book of Psalms. And we also have Yahweh's uh, eternal word coming out of Philadelphia. We want to thank Father Yahweh for allowing us words. And there's also the Holy Name Bible and many other scriptures that have Father Yahweh and Yahshua's name in them. And yet we want to praise Father Yahweh for allowing us to know his truth. And so when we're looking at the word, I'm going to... Uh, most of the time I read directly right out of the scripture, but I'm going to share a few things outside of these, in, from inside of these magazines so that um, we've sent these magazines all over the world back in the day. And mainly because we uh, were doing bulk mailing and people were desirous of hearing truth, so we would mail them. People would give us people's names, and we mailed them to different places, different countries, different states, different cities, so the people had an opportunity to look in their Bible and read the word of Yahweh while they were reading through the scripture. Before we ever got what we call the King James Version, they had already taken Father Yahweh's name out of the scripture. And even though you know the word says do not take from and do not add to. And yet, listen, many think, Father, it's getting ready to restore some things into the land. So we all, listen, we can all worship him with one consent. Back in the day, everybody spoke the same tongue, same language. Today, the languages are scattered. People are over here and over here and over there. And yet, listen. When we have a desire to come together, study Father Yahweh's word, he, by the power of his spirit, will be in our presence as well as being in us and will direct us with what we know. We're coming to that time. We're in that time. We've been in that time for some time, and it's time for everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. We praise Father Yahweh for his goodness. So anyway, I'm going to read just a little bit. Uh, so... Um, and I don't know. Anyway, this, this magazine is called The Power of Prayer. Um, I wrote this magazine at a time when my late pastor was in the hospital. He had had bronchitis, and, you know, as I gave it to him, he said, you don't even know what you have, you know. And, and so, in other words, he was telling me he really enjoyed this magazine because whenever I wrote a magazine, I would give it to him to proofread or look at or, you know, give me some if, if I needed to put something else in it. Um, sometime he would maybe give me a scripture, but most of the time, um, if he gave me something, maybe it, uh, it was a, a scripture from the prophets that he would give me because I usually try to start at the beginning, um, in, uh, the first five books and write those magazines and, in, and because I wrote under the anointing, um, most of the time I would pull out some scriptures and then his father would speak, then I would write. But anyway, I'm, I'm thankful because this, this pathway is a growth process. Anytime, you know, if you even look at our children, our children go to school most of the time. Um, even if they don't go actually into school, if they're homeschooled, they still start in uh, primary school or first grade, second grade, kindergarten, and, and go on up. You know, they don't start in college and say, well, I'm here. They start in kindergarten or nursery school, 
first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Sometimes they might even jump a grade, but guess what? Even if they jump a grade, they still have things that they have to learn from the grade that they didn't go through. Hallelujah. Anyway, this magazine is called The Power of Prayer. And the main, the, um, I had John 17 as one of the prayers that Yahshua prayed because Yahshua manifested Father Yahweh's name to the disciples that were given to him. And so as we would even go back and read that, it is a powerful, powerful prayer because that prayer comes down to us even right now because there are many people, hallelujah, who are going to come into the kingdom of Yahweh. And so we have to realize that as we are sharing the restoration message, we are sharing um, Father Yahweh's word. So if there's things that people have not heard as we are sharing the word, then they can hear what they need to hear. So, you know, prayer is our heartfelt and solemn communication to Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. That's what I have written here. And, and so one of the first places we see prayer mentioned is found in Genesis chapter 20, verse 17 and 18. You know, so whenever Father Yahweh was speaking to Abraham, he was sharing with him what was going to happen. And he made a request, an intercessory prayer for the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know that Lot was down in Sodom and Gomorrah, and yet he started at 50 and he went down to 10. He said, if there are 10 in the place, would you, keep, would you not destroy it? Well, we know Lot and his um, wife and his two daughters were taken out by the angels or by the men that went there. They were angels. And so that they weren't destroyed along with the place. So intercessory prayer is an important thing. And we know that Yahshua, even now, is making intercession for us. So we want to know and realize that there are different types of prayers. There's intercessory prayer. There's a prayer of adoration. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. And yet as we're looking in this um, um, magazine, and I'm just going to read here. It says, prayer of and supplication. Uh, depart from, and these this are just some of the scriptures that I put in here. Psalm 6, verse 8 through 10. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for Yahweh has heard the voice of my weeping. Yahweh has heard my supplication. Yahweh will receive my prayer. Let all the enemies, let all my enemies be ashamed and sore back. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. We know that there's a lot of things going in the world, on in the world. And so many, many of the pastors, because people are fearful, they're telling their people to pray, pray. Pray as never before. And yet, we got to read the word. We have to live the word. We have to do Father Yahweh's truth. Because if we don't know what truth is, then it doesn't matter. Because we're going to pray wrong. We're going to do wrong. And we won't know what we need to do. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and uh, supplication for all saints, for those who are set apart. We've got to pray for the body because, and yet every day somebody's add, being added to the body of Yahshua so that they can walk upright, so that they can hear the word, so they can see the things and be able to walk in the commands that Father Yahweh has given us. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. So Psalm 26, 6 to 8, it says, I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass your altar, O Yahweh, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Yahweh, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your honor dwells. You know, and so when we really think about Jerusalem is the place, hallelujah, where Father Yahweh placed his name. And yet he said his house would be called, his, his 
place of worship, the temple, would be called a house of prayer for all people. And so when we're looking at the scripture, we want to recognize that even as Father Yahweh is calling, he's calling the people for his namesake, and he wants us to do, even as it says here, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 17, it says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything, everything, give thanks for this is the will of Yahweh in the Messiah, Yahshua, concerning you. He wants us to rejoice. He wants us to continue to give thanks. He wants us to pray, hallelujah, because there are some things coming down the line, and many people are fearful, and yet, because of the fact that many people just don't know who Father Yahweh is, they, look, it's a growth process. It's a growth process. You know, if Father speaks something in your ear today, if you begin to pray about that, seek him for what he wants you to know. And however he's going to give you that truth, it will come to be something that will help you in your spiritual life. So, um, as I've shared in here, um, the greatest, probably, intercessory prayer, and it's coming out of John 17, and yet, when we're looking at what Yahshua has done for us, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to go into the other magazine on truth. Um, it says, matter of fact, let me read. In Yachanon chapter 17. And I would like to share this. I use the King James Version every time I'm ministering. And yet, listen, as I've shared many times, before we ever got to scriptures, our scriptures were written on scrolls. They took Father Yahweh and Yahshua's name out. And so they caused everybody to call our Heavenly Father and His Son by names and titles that were not there even in the beginning. There's no J in Hebrew, Greek, Russian, or Latin, and the J was made from an I in the, in the 1500s. So when we're looking at the scripture, you may see some J words, but look, John is Yachanon. Yachanon. Anyway, in John chapter 17, and I may not read it all, but I'm going to start at it anyway. It says, These words spoke Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, now listen, because Yahshua came to represent Father Yahweh, and yet he came to show us who Father Yahweh is, and yet he came to save us from our sins. So we're going to think about all the things that Yahshua has come to do, and even the things that he already fulfilled and things that he still must fulfill. It says, Father, the hours come, glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. So when we're obedient to the commandments that Father that Yahshua spoke, then we glorify Yahshua, and then Yahshua glorifies Father Yahweh. And yet when he is trying to allow the disciples that are with him to realize that Father Yahweh sent him, and he is fulfilling the command that Father Yahweh gave him to do, then as we look at these scriptures, then we will see some things. It says, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, it's talking about Yahweh, the only true Yahweh, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. If you go back to Philippians, he said he was in the image of Father Yahweh and equal with Father Yahweh, yet he did not try to be exalt himself and be like Yahweh because he came for a purpose. So he humbled himself, became in the flesh like us, 
so that he could show us how we're supposed to live. Anyway, it says, it says, I have manifested your name. Yahshua manifested Yahweh's name. I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they are were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept my word. The words that Yahshua spoke. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received me and received them and have known surely that I came out from you. Yahshua came out from Father Yahweh. And they have believed that you did send me. When we look at Yahshua and he's called an apostle or shalak in the Hebrew because Father Yahweh sent him into the world to do the work that he is doing. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, Talking about Yahweh, keep through your name, your own name, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Yahweh's name was manifested to the disciples because even Abraham, Yazak, and Yaakov, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as you may know them, they knew who Father Yahweh was. And so Yahshua following the same path that needed to be known, he shared Father Yahweh's name with those disciples, hallelujah, who became the Shalak or apostles um, of the new covenant. It says, um, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me kept, I ha have kept, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. We're talking about Yada Iscariot. And now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. Their, our gladness would be what we would have read. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them for, from the evil. Keep us from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not under, of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, even so... I have sent them into the world. Hallelujah. It says, and for their sakes, I sanctify, I set myself apart that they also might be sanctified through the truth. We have to be set apart by Father Yahweh's truth. When we're looking at the word and he's showing us what he wants us to do, how to do it, when to do it giving us his feast days, giving us his commandments, we have to know how to do them and then do them in a proper way. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So this word is like 2,000 years old, yet it would have been written in the Hebrew tongue. Yahweh and Yahshua's name would have been in here so that we can see what it does say. So sometimes if a person's been indoctrinated in Christianity for a long, long time, if they don't know how to study, then when we start saying something to them, unless the spirit of Yahweh is moving in their life, they don't even have a way to understand. But one thing that Father Yahweh's word says in Hosea chapter 2, 16 and 17, he said he will take the names of Balaam 
out of their mouth, anything that we are not supposed to. And once he does that, and yet it comes because we study, because we prove all things, because we search the word, because we look to see, and if somebody speaks something to us, then we have to have the ability to search out what they're saying. It says, um, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. You know, and so... A lot of times, when if we don't go back and really read the beginning of the scripture, see what it does say, pick up the truths, you know, because if you read the scripture, you're going to read some things. You may have been taught something, but if it if it's not like it should be, your spirit's going to receive that, and then you can search something out. It says, "And the glory which you gave me, I have given them." that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made per perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you love me. Father Yahweh loves us. But then if we are not being obedient to his commandments, look, then we're not loving him with all our mind, our body, and our spirit. Hallelujah. It says, Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which you have given me for you love me before the foundation of the world. Yahshua was there even when creation. He was there before. And so a lot of times if people are not reading the scripture, they don't see that Yahshua was there saying, Father, let us make man in our image. And that he is that one coming out of Genesis chapter 315. That he is the one who, who took our sin upon his body, hallelujah, died, hallelujah, was buried and rose on the third day. And so there's some things that have to happen. It says, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. And I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So when we receive the Ruach HaKadosh, hallelujah, it is because we've been obedient, because we have glorified Yahshua so that Yahshua can glorify Father Yahweh. We have, you know, that whole process has to be fulfilled. And a lot of times when people have not been told all the truth that they need to know, then people are not walking in the path of righteousness that Father Yahweh has, been give, has given to us because many people have been told they have no commandments to keep. But Yahshua said, he said, I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So all of the commandments must be fulfilled in us. In other words, when the scripture says, the spirit will guide us to all, all truth, we have to realize that the spirit will guide us to all truth. But if we're not reading if we're not in a, in a correct Bible study with someone Holy Spirit filled who is studying Father Yahweh's word, who is seeking to know the truth, who is seeking to be obedient, then we won't even know what to do. So I'm going to read a couple things out of this magazine. And I pray that it will uh, enlighten you so that you can uh, know some of the things that you need to know. So, I'm gonna go right here. <laughs> it says, everything in the universe was created by Yahshua, and Yahshua was the beginning of Yahweh's creation. Uh, and I'm gonna share this. It says, evolution is a man-made theory, and the term is not in the scriptures. 
John 1.10, Revelation 4.11, Colossians 1.16-17, Revelation 3.14, and Revelation 19.11, and John 8.42. It says, if Yahshua makes us free, we shall be free indeed. And yet, Father Yahweh's word is what is true. And we know that, according to Zephaniah 3.9, that Father Yahweh is going to return to the land, a pure language, so that all mankind can worship him with one consent. You know, not one person saying this over here and somebody saying something else over here. Because Father Yahweh said he's going to put his laws in our inward part. And so if he's going to put them in, it's because, first of all, we're studying because we believe the truth, because we want to walk upright before him. And if we want to walk upright before him, when he gives us the Ruach HaKadosh to indwell us, you know, even if you go back to um, Exodus, Father Yahweh said he was making a tabernacle so he could dwell with, 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 with the 12 tribes. And so in, in us, our foreparents coming out of the land of Egypt, he's calling us right now out of the land of darkness, out of, out of the world of darkness, out of the world of sin, so that we can walk up right before him, so that we can keep his commandments and his laws, so that we can glorify, hallelujah, Yahshua, so that Yahshua can glorify Father Yahweh. It's a whole process that must happen, and if it's happening in the way that Father Yahweh said, then we will truly be at the place we need to be. And uh, it says, the family consists of a male father or husband, a female mother or wife, the children, not dogs or cats or any other animal. You know, I'm seeing some things on television, you know, <laughs> where woman, the, the son, is in another room. He fell. And she says, he, she tell, he tells her, I said, Mom, I fell. She said, yes. He said, um, he's bleeding. She said, well, get two bandages. But she's got the cat on her shoulder, and then she goes and feeds the cat. Animals, dogs, and cats are not more important than people. Oh, Father, help us. It says the family consists of a male father or husband and a female mother or wife and children, not dogs and cats or any other animal. They are not to be, uh, there are not to be any same-sex marriages or cohabitation living arrangements. Marriage is the way that Yahweh ordained for this purpose of having a family. And then I have some scriptures, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, uh, Genesis 2, 20, 25, 4, 1 and 2, Genesis 19, 1 through 29, Romans 1, 27, Leviticus 18, verse 22. So when these magazines were written, and, you know, as Father Yahweh guided me by his spirit, then I wrote the scriptures that were given. Yahweh's holy days shows his plan of salvation for mankind, and they are fulfilled by Yahshua. To reject the feast days or holy days is to reject the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yahshua said, we must believe in him as the scriptures have said, and we must observe the things that he commanded. The feast days are all in the New Testament, the New Covenant. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. If we look through the scripture, we will see the fulfillment of Father Yahweh's feast days, including the seventh-day Shabbat or the seventh-day Sabbath. When we're looking at the seventh-day Sabbath, we know that Yahshua is going to reign for 1,000 years. That is the fulfillment of the Sabbath day because Father Yahweh has given man 6,000 years to rule himself, and yet in the, the 1,000 year reign of Yahshua, which represents the seventh 1,000 year day, remember, a thousand years is as a day, and a day as a thousand years. So if we think about that, when we're looking at the scripture, when Yahshua is reigning, hallelujah, 
for that 1,000 years here on the earth and we reign with him, then that is the fulfillment of the seventh day Sabbath. So for those who are not keeping the seventh day Sabbath, those who are not keeping Father Yahweh's feast days, Passover, New Covenant in Yahshua's blood, um, unleavened bread, matzah, you know, unleavened bread and Passover go together. And if we're not doing them together, then we have to say, oops, people are not reading. And yet, if you even read Matthew, Mark, Luke, Yachanon, 1 Corinthians, you're going to see Passover and unleavened bread. You would see it. And so when people are not doing Father Yahweh's feast days, then we have to say, so who are they serving? Have they really humbled themselves before Father Yahweh's mighty hand to do and keep Father Yahweh's commandments. And so if we're not keeping the commandments that Father Yahweh has given, then we have to see who are we obeying. This is what I have in here. Obedience, repentance, and confession of sin bring forth forgiveness. We must forgive others to be forgiven, and we must receive and believe that we are forgiven by Yahweh to be able to live a life of faith and assurance. If we have the Holy Spirit and do not let the Spirit guide us to all truth, then we are committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit as if the Spirit cannot teach and show you what you need to know. Acts 5, 29, Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28, Revelation 22, Verse 14, uh, Revelation 2, 5, Acts 17, 30, uh, Acts 26, 20, 1 John 1, 9, Ephesians 4, 31. In other words, there are scriptures in this magazine to guide you so you can see what each section is talking about. Because a lot of times, you know, I'm hearing so many people say, well, we don't have anything to do. All we have to do is believe because Yahshua did everything. And they're not saying Yahshua. Yahshua did everything for us. But I want you to notice one thing. The Greeks worshiped Zeus. The Romans worshiped I-U-P-T-E-R. And before the J was ever made, hallelujah, in the 1500s, most of those words started with an I. And yet, when we do some research, listen, we have to research, study, study to show yourself approved unto Yahweh, workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we don't study, there's things that we'll never see. You know, you're seeing a lot of storms and th tornadoes and, and, and haboobs or sandstorms, and you're seeing all kinds of murders and all kinds of things happening. But listen, Father Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, sent Yahshua into the world to show us, hallelujah, how to walk upright, how to live a righteous and a Kodesh life before him. And if we do that and we are reading Father Yahweh's word, look, even in the Apocrypha, it talks, you know, the Maccabees show some things that happened to our foreparents and how they had to overcome the persecution of that day, and here comes some persecution of our day. And yet, listen, as Yahshua prayed and made intercessory, intercessory prayer for the disciples of that time, and even down to the last person who is coming into the kingdom, hallelujah, his prayer and his blood never loses its power. And so we have to pray that as Father Yahweh is allowing us to read his word and we see the doctrines that he has given us, that we will be a people who will decide to obey him, to live the life that he has given us to live. Anyway, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man or the servant of Yahweh may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We can't do any good works if you don't know the truth. If you don't know how to find Father Yahweh's doctrine, 
which is a teaching on every subject. There's a teaching on the Sabbath. There's a teaching about Passover. There's a teaching about how to dress. There's a teaching. Listen, they didn't have pants back in the day. Even the men did not wear pants. The Greeks were the first ones who changed their dress. It wasn't the Hebrews. And yet, if you look at the, the scripture, you will see britches, which the priests were supposed to put on under their garments from their waist to up above their knee so that their nakedness was not shown. Because they were picking up animals, they were picking up and shoveling coal and wood or whatever they had to shovel, the ashes. Listen, we got to read Father Yahweh's word. We have to be able to see what he's telling us to do. And listen, and humble ourselves and want to live the life he's calling us to live. They didn't have microwaves. They didn't even have television. I praise Father Yahweh for the television so that people can have an opportunity to hear Father Yahweh's word. And yet, if we are doing what Father Yahweh says for us to do, the way he says for us to do it, listen, you'll see a whole lot of things come to fruition. Listen, we don't want to be judged and be judged as unrighteous. Because, listen, things are coming down. They're coming down. Listen, reproof. No, doctrine. It says doctrine is the teaching on any subject which must be found usually starting in the Old Testament, because that's what people have been taught, in the Old Covenant, and brought over to the New, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Listen, it is not all found in one place, but in several different places. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, Deuteronomy 32, hallelujah, verse 2 through 3. Correction. Correction is something that we change when we have been doing wrong. A correction could be when one stops saying Holy Ghost and uses the correct term of the Holy Spirit. We were all taught Holy Ghost. I never did like ghosts, and even though ghosts would really represent a demon, <laughs> not a ghost, because there are no such things. Anyway, so there are some things that we have been taught to say, that we as a people have to learn to speak differently. But because most of the world has been deceived, no, all the world, the whole world has been deceived, so therefore there are things that all of us have to learn not to say. And it's not that everyone is going to be at that place because as it says in Revelation 21, 8, and they repented not of their sin. So there are some things that, you know, sometimes people believe that everyone is going to be reconciled. But the truth of the matter is that everyone is not going to be saved. Everyone is not going to be reconciled to enter into Father Yahweh's kingdom. Revelation 21, verse 8. And I've got to read this because a lot of times if you don't read something, so somebody has it right in their present hearing, then they don't believe it. And I'm going to start at verse 7. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Father Yahweh's calling the 12 tribes of Yasharah, and all those that Father Yahweh shall call and choose to be added to that group to do the work that he's calling them to do. Hallelujah. It says, but the fearful, Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I've got about 10 minutes to go. My ultimate prayer is that you wrote down these scriptures. My ultimate prayer is that as you hear the word, I'm going to read over the graphics. Um, I pray that if you would like some more information, 
you can look on my YouTube channel under Pastor Beverly Gordon, and you will see many, many, many lessons. And there are many lessons that I'm going to review again because many people have grown up. Some people have moved out the city. Many people have moved out of the country. And yet, hallelujah, Father Yahweh's word must go all around the world. And we have to find out about who Yahshua is before Yahshua comes. And so we thank Father Yahweh for his goodness and his mercy, for his mercy does endure forever. Now, um, when we really think about, there's a lot of things. Uh, there's even a prophecy in the back of this magazine, and this is what it says. I'm going to read it, and if you don't see me anymore, my blessings are for you, and I pray that Father Yahweh will bless you and allow you to hear the truth of his word so that you can be a person who can enter into his kingdom. This is from uh, mm, mm, <clears throat> back in the day. I wrote this magazine in 1996. This prophecy is just a little bit before that. But this is what it says, because we want the power of, we want to have the power of prayer and truth. It says, who are my people, my children, those of you that I have called to do my biddings? I have called you. You have answered, but you don't act. I have given my grace, must I take it away? You have conformed to do the will of man's doctrines, forgetting the things of old. You must turn back to me in order for me to work through you. You have blocked my way with your pagan traditions. You put the stumbling block in your own paths. I have sent those chosen by me to move them, but yet you fight against them. You refuse to hear them because they appear different, particular, or peculiar. That's because they are. You are not seen with your spiritual eyes. Uncover the cedars and you will see. Thus saith Yahweh, I said, if my people who are called by my name, not a title, not my title, shall turn from their wicked ways, I will answer them. He said he would, he would forgive our sins and heal our land. It's time for each one of us to read the scriptures starting at the beginning and then connect the dots so that you can see who we are. It says the children of Yashara are Yahweh's children today because of a spiritual adoption coming from the circumcision of the heart made without hand, and yet keeping, we have to also go back and keep Father Yahweh's commandments from Torah and any commands that you see in the prophets, anything that he's speaking in the Psalms, in the Book of Wisdom, or anywhere else that he has given us, his word. It says, uh, and, and they're called the Hebrew people, if you look in the scripture. Abram was called a Hebrew in Genesis 14, verse 13. Even Yosef, when he went to the land of Egypt, he was called a Hebrew because he's a Hebrew. When you talk about uh, the apostle Shaul, or Saul, he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. He said he was a Hebrew of Hebrews in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. And so when we're looking at the scripture, Father Yahweh is going to return to the land, a pure language, so that all can worship him with one consent. We're going to speak the same thing because we're going to have the same tongue. Even back in the day, in another set of scriptures, it says that even the animals could talk, but once sin came into the world, then the animals could not talk. And yet we see the uh, donkey who spoke hallelujah, and um, when, I um, uh, can't think of his name right now, when, um, and, and kept the man that he was trying to protect from being killed. So we want to be a people who will walk in the light of Yahweh's word. We want to be, gain uh, spiritual instructions so that we know how to live upright before Father Yahweh. Father Yahweh is calling us out, and yet he's given us the power of prayer. We have to know when to pray, who to pray for, when to pray, 
And if you would like any of these magazines, you can, may write Congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue, or Post Office Box 5917, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210-0917. These magazines are free. We don't charge for them, and yet every donation is thankful, is, is appreciated, because we have not ever sold any of our materials because we freely receive and we freely are giving them to you if you want one. In the name of Yahshua, Yahweh bless you, Yahweh keep you. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, Shalom, Hallelujah.